Messi is fucked for good. This is a lesson. We're going to come back. Let's go, boys! I have your seat back. All right, so do you want some last minute info? Gladly. Gladly. Right, so they seem to prefer on border, they prefer top bomb side defense yeah. first and then vents secondary. They will just generally, if they can go top, they will go top. So on armory lockers, they, they go mirror, smoke, Jaeger, bandit, and pulse. Sometimes they take frost. Yeah, we saw that. I've got serious dry mouth. Must mean that the game's close. So I'm Shaz, or Tom. Basically, I can be anything under the sun. I could be a nanny, I could be uh, just looking at analytics of the opponents, I could be looking at our own strats, all the way back to again, like banning what maps do they play and what maps do we play and should we pick up a new map. Just need to keep calm when you're on stage, boys, because these guys are going to be more nervous than us, so just let them shake themselves apart. Yeah. Are we packing up, ready to go? Yeah. Let's go, boys. We're at GamesCon, the LAN Finals. Penta's always a really competitive team. All the yeah. players are always hyper-focused. They want to be the best. They want to put themselves on the stage and, and to, to please the fans, basically. I'm a very dedicated player, and I've accumulated over 8,000 hours of actual playtime in the game, which is almost a year. I didn't want to be a student. I wanted to do like my own thing. I wanted to go outside of that average wave and kind of make my own wave. I don't have any experience in FPS games, but I had a will and a passion to get where I am. But also I put in as much effort as I can as an individual to make sure that I don't let the team down. A winning finish smile. <laughs> we were kind of uh, the team of the outsiders that people didn't particularly want. Pengu, Fabian, Eunice, they're a little bit outcast, we like to call ourselves. And we had to you know, contend with these issues where we're all trying to speak English, but there's none of our native languages apart from mine. It's better comms if you can say, you said exactly what you need to say, you just didn't add that question at the end. Can we do something else? So we've had to spend a lot of time working together to make sure that we speak in the same language, basically. Before every LAN, we go to Berlin at the Penta headquarters and we boot camp there for, for a week, roughly. But meeting in person is such a, such a large part of actually team bonding and coming together. I feel like a lot of teams miss out on that because they're coming straight from their home, coming straight to LAN, where it can be quite, especially at Gamescom, where it's really chaotic. Penta against Team Font. Let them hear your support here at Gamescom. I've always kind of been in the background, organizing the players, um, really working out any issues and working out, like trying to grow these people into the certain roles that we needed within the team. I lead from the back, boss. Like, that's probably the best way to describe it. I make sure that we're always talking, that there's no fights, that everyone's on the same page, we're pushing towards the same goal. I'm the person that sits above that and can see everything that's going on between the different players and their different roles and what their objectives are within the game and their, you know, their own life that's going on as well, as well around them. So basically, boys, you just need to keep calm because you're panicking. You I mean, Chess is... Uh... He's everybody's stepping stone because he looks at all our gameplay, both from a fundamental perspective, but also mindset. And he's like the guru. Like, if I have an issue, I can come to Shaz. And if I have an issue, but I don't know I have an issue, he'll come to me. So he allowed everybody to function. Even though it's only 10% better, that 10% makes all the difference. Panda, ladies and gentlemen, are going to the grand final. Boys, come on. Messi is fucked for good. Fucking good. Next one, elevate. Take it back the entire way. We got an hour. We got an hour. Shaz could probably be my father at this point. Like, uh, he feels that father figure for me that I've never had. I talk to the guy about girls, about private stuff, about hardships, and he's just always there for a good talk. But it's just a mind game, boys. Like, today we let it slip just now a little bit. We need to pin down the mind game, yeah? Fucking shaking like fuck. Yeah. 
So elevate band consular, band border, and band coastline. It could be a coastline game. I reckon it's going to be a coastline game. It is grand finals time. Can he grab a third? No, he grabs two hands, gets it, and it looks like Penta Sport is going to be the champions here. They're going to be the season. Boys, again, here we are. And that was the first time that I realized how much it could mean to me. And you play for so much more than yourself. You play for your fans, you play for your sponsors, you play for your organization, and, and your teammates, and yourself, of course. All the hard work, all, all the time, just makes it all worth it. A Penta era um time imbatível, ninguém ganhava da Penta, porque a Penta tinha sido acho que duas vezes campeã, campeã da Pro League, eles eram os caras. Their coach was actually shitting himself. He's new, he, he's still learning, but basically he wasn't expecting the picks and bands. You can see it in his face. So we're good to go, boys. We are very good. We had an element of overconfidence coming out of year two, season two, uh, which is why I think we probably performed so bad in Brazil. But the narrative that was there that we were the big evil guys knocking all the Brazilian teams out of all the previous lands. Um, so I think that got a little bit under my guy's skin. Yeah, we were very separated on attack. We didn't really co we were we weren't a team on attack. It's just a lesson. This is a lesson. Yeah. I mean, before all this, I've been doing this for what? Since year one, season one, right? And I failed, 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 and then finally we started succeeding. So this is again, again a lesson. You learn something. You apply it and you become better. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back. I'd been working like my day job and I've been basically been coaching as well so I've been doing a lot of hours leading up to it. It was uh, like say goodbye to your life, buckle down for three months uh, in the preparation for Brazil. So it was like a massive blow. Well we've won for the last two seasons before that so as soon as you lose one season yeah a lot of doubts can come in like how am I doing and what have I done differently, what are they doing differently, what can I learn from those other teams. It's a wake up moment, it revitalizes you but it terrifies you at the same time. Especially when you're like me and you just want to win, 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 win. That's, that's why we're here in the game. Whenever you're at the top of your game or the, the pinnacle of a competition, everyone's eyes are always on you. you. You can't escape the attention. Everyone's going to be looking at what you do, how you do it, what, type, you know, what side of the bed you sleep in, what time do you wake up. Every, like every little aspect of it, you'll be under a microscope. So I believe that, yes, the more, the more times that you win, the more times you're at the top, the more you have to be fearful of watching out for other people. As well as you, as yourself as an individual, you develop a, a mindset that you are, you are the best and you don't need to be under threat from other people and that just ends up creating a blind spot in your, you know, in your perception that someone's just going to come out of nowhere and give you a right hook and knock you out maybe.
Sorry, the, the chaos of my mind. There we go. So a lot of my time as a coach is spent looking at this kind of stuff where I'm watching what the other teams are doing. VODs like this, I'd end up watching probably four or five times just to try and get all the little bits of information. I kind of realized after Brazil uh, that I needed to commit time again back towards it. Um, you know, when you, if you're ever in esports, on, on, in my position, it's a little bit iffy. You don't know what's going to happen in life, what's going to go on. Is you know, it's all chaotic, and, but brilliant at the same time. So uh, I kind of had a bit of a, an epiphany, just to sit down and really think about it. And I wanted to do something that I'm passionate about, so I'm, I put more time into this, cut back on the day job, uh, just so I can really, really commit to the guys because they deserve it. They they spend their life at the moment playing the game and really making sure they're up to par. So. If I expect them to put the work in, I should as well. I think it means everything. It means more to them than I think anyone can imagine. When they're on those PCs, they, they don't care about anything. They don't notice anyone around them. They don't hear the crowd. Nothing matters except for that next round. It, it doesn't matter how rough it was to get to first place. If you win, you beat everything else. Is the biggest tournament on every single front, every single way, and it's where you want to be. It's where you need to be as a player, as a team. It's, it's whether or not we can get back on the horse. We need to show that we're able to recover from uh, the mistakes that we made in Brazil and that we can continue to innovate and really push ourselves back to the edge of that competition. It was the first time for everyone and, and none of us really knew you know, how nervous we were going to be or how big of an impact it was going to have but I just remember that we arrived and we took the first night we just watched a lot of odds so we just studied opposing teams. The very first game on stage was against ENDS so we really knew that the end game was the most emotional because it was kind of fight between old team members and new team members. We ended up taking the victory 2-0 and then it's almost so scripted because when you think about it, the semi-final was against Black Dragons, the actual team that we lost to in Sao Paulo. And that was our redemption fight right there. Ended up taking that victory as well at that point you know, we're really, really happy, you know, we're, we're backstage and we're like, oh my God, what's the next game? Like, are we in the quarterfinal now? Are we in the final? We, we don't even know. And our, our coach goes, guys, we're in the final. And we're like, what? We're the, what? We're in the final? What, what does that mean? Can we actually win this thing? We figure out later that day that we actually play EG in the final. So we're kind of, uh, with a red line, we're kind of back to where we started. You know, we're up against EG, just like in group stage. We've played each other before, meaning that we knew how each other played. And it's a best of five. But we lose the first two maps, we get smashed. They played so much better than we did. Let's go, boys! Fucking fantastic map. Fantastic. to me. This is this is to you. You got those big ass plays that we're trying to make. We cannot make them. I, I need you alive. I need you to stay alive. I remember when we lost the second map. I looked at the crowd and I was kind of going, this was a good tournament. You know, I, I'm really happy we got to the final. Like, I was actually kind of mentally giving up. I believed that we had lost. We, we basically, we never took it properly from West Main or Control Kitchen or anything else. But whatever, map's over. Now we're on cafe. We've got three minutes. Let's calm down. So much fucking pressure is on them right now. Yeah, they, are, they are the biggest favorites and they are down oh fucking 2 Just relax, okay? Play together. And I can't be happy and I can't be glad and not shout at you if we don't do our basic shit. They are shitting their fucking pants Boys. right now. Now. Boys, this is it. There's no excuses now. Yeah. They have everything to lose now. We have zero two. This is our next map. 
you can't really give yourself hope. That needs to come from someone else when you're down. And that was Fabian in that tournament. In the very first round, you can see a momentum swap instant. Be able to eliminate Amante, but Penta takes their first map. I think that's actually the entire definition of like playing to the highest level. I think that is when your back is against the wall. Either you play now or, or it's over. Baiting it out, goes for the ADS. Necrox can't hit his shot, and Fabian wins it. How does that happen? Map number five between the two extraordinary teams. Two seconds. Young pushes up, running out of time. Neither get it. Penta, hold on. Oh my! Match point. Penta. Rather the Hibana. Just waiting. They'll look to push together. The Diffuser in a position where they'll have to see when the Hibana goes through. One will cover the doorway as they start to defuse. Pengu goes for one on the Young. Can he go the second? Winning felt like it felt like hours, right? Time stopped completely. Everything slowed down, right? Everything took forever. Then we shook their hand and and looking at them and how devastated they were, that took forever as well. It was like it was like I think it was a minute maybe max we were there, but it felt like it was so much longer. Good job, buddy. Congrats. Good job. Don't take it too much, okay? Come on. We love you. We fucking love you. We all fucking love you. It's, it's something that you can never have again, I feel like. I feel like that is unreachable. That is the peak of my career right there. It's tatted on my arm. Trophies on my shelf. You know what I mean? Like, like, and I don't think it'll be topped ever. It's like the happiest moment of my life, I think. That's winning invitation. If that's one thing I could relive from the last two or three years, it's definitely winning invitationals. I'm just so proud of my, my boys. We made this a year ago with the ambition, literally, at Invitationals to come here a year later and win it, and we've done it. Just. Hands and swords! Oh, the world champions of Wave of Six Siege! It, it's the biggest emotion, like, gap that I've had in my entire life so far. It's love, it's passion, it's hate, it's sadness, it's. it's fulfillment, it's joy. We just put on the show of a year. Come on, 2-0. Fucking amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was. Thank you. <laughs> Good work, my friend. Good work. Congratulations. And in the end, you know, when the interview is over, when Matt then looked at me and said, I'm proud, and it just kicked me really hard. I broke down in tears immediately. It was so bad. He just said, I know, you know, I know that feeling.